<laughs> you go. I went last time. <laughs> so, uh, so Chris had been talking to um, our exec Lydia over at Audible, and he found out that she that they had just gotten the license to do this, and he was like, "Well, I want to do it, but if we really want this to like sing, we got to bring in Amber Benson, my close personal." <laughs> exactly. I was doing what. Yeah, exactly. No, no uh, honestly, uh, um, I I told them very clearly that, and I, I believe this 100. percent There is no way to bring the cast back, any cast back, without her, because the only way anybody is going to come back into this scenario is with the trust and and the the, the respect. Uh, that that they all have for one another, um, and that was the only way. And, and we had been collaborating as writers for uh, too long. Amber doesn't like me to say how long we've been collaborating as writers. <laughs> it's been a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, a couple of days, a long time. Mike, you know, you know how um, old I am. I do. I'm, so I'm a tired right. thirty-year-old. Is what we decided earlier. So you can also be thirty. I'm a tired thirty-year-old, you guys. Yeah. Um, but Chris and his Chris and his family are like my East Coast family. I stay at their house when I'm in the Boston area. Uh, I get to stay in the princess bed, his daughter's bed. <laughs> so you know, the getting, only person allowed. Yeah. Getting to work together again was really was part of the pull for me. And we love yeah. Lydia and Meg over at Audible. They are such fans of the fandom, and they kept us true. There were times when Meg could be like, oh, "I think they actually said this." Not that. I was like, "Well, you know better yeah. than either of us." Lydia would come in from the booth and be like, "Actually." It was this. And Susan. Like, yeah. 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 It kills me. It kills me that that became associated with the Tara Willow fandom. Um, I think we were presented with a really cool, like, multiverse world to play in, which allowed us to bring in people and characters that maybe didn't get their due, and maybe give them a better, a better way forward, a better ending, a better closure, you know, sense of closure. Uh, but for me, like. Tara and keeping the, the like good, kind, empathetic part of her like the, as the baseline, and then letting her do kind of dark things. We had like we worked really hard to make sure because the fandom was very damaged by what happened, and it was damaging to me personally. So I was like, we have to make sure that like the trueness of her is always there. Like it's not just she's doing bad things; she's bad. It's she's she is tormented, and there's things going on, and there will be a good. Trust us. Go on the journey. Right. We'll, we'll have a good experience. Well, and we talked about that so many times during this. Specifically, well, we I would fight him. I'd be like, "No, she can't do." It. And he'd be like, "Just we're, we're, we're going. Art. We're going somewhere." And you know, by the time we get to the end of this, if some of you may have listened to it, some of you may not. I mean, right? You listened to we've, eight hours. We have first three. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, um, the goodness of, of Tara is always there. Yeah. But we are forging, hopefully for the future, we're forging a new way forward, way for, forward her. for her. And uh, oh, and by yeah. the time we're done, we've we've done that. And and uh, and that was super important to me too. Not only as a like both as a fan, which I've always been a fan, but also as a friend because yeah, I mean no, literally I had I wrote thirteen Buffy novels. The last one was like what ten years after I had stopped doing it. And the only reason I came back to do that last one is because they, they were like, well, would you want to do another one? Because we're wrapping up the line and you want to come in one more time. And I said, I'll do it. But the only way I want to do it is if I can bring Tara back to life and have a proper ending. And so um, and that, that book allowed me to do that. But how many people read it? Just a handful. Now we have millions of people who are going to be able to listen to... Awake, Slayers. Awake Slayers, an, an audio, audible original an audible, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> they, I think I actually very appreciate that. We're sort of walking this fine line yeah. with the SAG after strikes. So we want to be very respectful of the union. Yep, no, um, I went and, and picketed yesterday. Um, 
I think that it's a much more intimate experience. When you're listening to something on your headphones, when you close your eyes, you are not just a listener or an audience. You are a participant. You are in this with these characters. And I think that's the difference between doing something in a film television medium versus an audio medium. And we had to be really mindful of like, well, we have no co people have no context, so you have to describe things verbally that maybe you're like, oh. and we were very lucky to have uh, Leia De Leon Hayes do all the info dump mythology stuff for us. She was this incredible new character, a young woman of color who was a slayer. Which we live in 2023, we need a diverse cast. We have Juno Dawson, we have Julia Cho. We just have these incredible people who came and played in this this. Sand, sand box with us. So, yeah. said cat box. box. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think also that just being in the studio together, um, everyone who was there, if yeah. they were there, they were listening or they were in the scene, and uh, and that intimacy of the performance and seeing them all work together like that elevated what you're hearing and the emotion that you're hearing. Um, I can't tell you how many times people in the booth and, and the cast, people were crying. One scene in particular in episode five, Charisma had everybody crying. And uh, and I think the intimacy of the recording process is what makes that happen. No, when you're looking at Juliet Landau and she's gonna do naughty things to you. <laughs> oh my God. I is it hot? I feel a little hot. Yeah. Um, everybody else in the yeah. studio was like, oh, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, and for me to get to work with people that I've never worked with before, you know? Charisma and I had done a film together many years ago, and that was also the impetus. I wanted to see her play a slayer. I was just like, that's just my own little itch that I want scratched. Um, yeah. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I know, I'll dig my own hole. <laughs> um, but as, yeah. as Tony said to me one time, you're on your own, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, and Tony was like on this, like he was in a studio in the UK, and he's on the screen, we're recording his stuff there, he's dealing, like interacting with the, like our other cast members, it was it was. He brought incredible. his little placard. Uh, that said Mr. Giles that he told from the set uh, so that he would so basically once he came in and everybody was there he held it up <laughs> so everybody could see it he's the and, you know, he's the best yeah and it was just you know and it was also great because getting people to say yes getting to have I mean when they found out that you know like Tony's really doing it yeah he's not here but he's Danny gonna be Strong is gonna yeah. do this well and that was the other one it's like, <laughs> like, why, is like why is Danny Danny's like this famous writer <laughs> Emmy winner Oscar he's winner like, you know, he's like the best yeah. he's like I've known Danny for a very long time and he's yeah. just good solid Jonathan Stock yeah. Yeah. to get him in there and so funny and got us in so much trouble with all of his riffing Oh yeah, we we got some we got censored. Yes, <laughs> yes. There. If you think it's what it, was it's, what was the line? Oh, you you got to 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 spike. Oh, that very was it very you're very very masculine, very masculine. <laughs> yeah, just the way he says it. But it was all. But there was so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Danny just had so much fun. Um, yeah, it was just great. I mean, it was such a. And I got to sneak in my boyfriend. He did the revamped theme song. We will ask. I, I will. The last thing I want to say, I realize we haven't said this the whole time, is the other thing we did is we managed to pull in a whole bunch of people who mean a lot to us to take yeah. small roles. Our friend Ali Costa, who introduced us as one of the ensemble voices. Our friend Jasmine Hyde, who was the star of Ghost of Albion, plays Althenia. Um, and our, oh, no, it's our, like a who's who of Easter eggs.